Hi, welcome to question nine of the 2022 um, paper two, Leave It Order Level Maths. If you want to copy the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com and let's get stuck in. So question nine here is looking like uh, geometry slash maybe trigonometry. It's always important to remember that any question can come up, like any topic can come up really in any question, uh, as hard as that might be to do uh, in some questions. So it says here that Sean has built a shed. Well done. The diagrams below show the dimensions of Sean's shed. So it's 8.5 meters high in the middle, and then the walls of it are 7 meter high, and it's a 12 meter wide. You see here a second diagram, and it's 18 meters in length. Okay. So straight away, I see two shapes. I see a rectangle, okay, and I see a triangle. And I see here that there's a difference here of 8.5 take away 7. That height there is 1.5. Now, that marking on the diagram of the exam paper might get you an attempt in a future part, okay? So it's worth trying to figure out anything you can about the diagram itself. It says the shed is the shape of a prism. Its front face is in the shape of a triangle on top of a rectangle. So that's the triangle up here and then the rectangle down here. And this is an, a non right angle triangle on top. So I, I get what's going on here. Then part A says, state which of the following statements is most likely to be true. Okay. So, and write down a possible height of Sean that would support your answer. So there's three options here. The shed at the highest point is three times as high as Sean. Okay. The shed at the highest point is five times as high as Sean. The shed at the highest point is eight times as high as Sean. I'm looking at, I suppose, here from different options, but if it was, if Sean was like maybe even like two meters tall, okay, three times two meters, like, and two meters would be a tall person, would be like six, over six foot. So two meters by three would be six. So he'd have to be more than two meters tall, which would be unusual, okay? Now you could find it out by going, how is it, 8.5 divided by three would give you, three that goes twice, three that goes like 2.7 meters tall-ish, okay? That's like, I don't even know if anybody's that height, okay? Now we did the same thing here with the other one, it went 8.5 divided by five, okay? And if I did this 8.5, meters divided by eight. Now that would roughly be one, okay? The one meter would be like three foot, okay? Um, which again, Sean could be, but they say most likely, okay? And somebody that short would be on the, uh, I suppose, outer um, limit of, of heights of people, okay? Um, they must say he's an adult at some stage. Or Sean built a shed, so I suppose we can imply that Sean's an adult. Now, 8.5 divided by 5, I'll need my calculator just to make sure. Actually, no, I probably don't. Uh, 8 into 5 goes once with 3 remainder. Okay, 8 into 35 goes 7. So he'd be 1.7 meters tall, which would be, you know, most likely. That's kind of the average height for a male in the Irish population. Okay. Now, in the notes, I've done it probably differently. I went 5 times some height gives me 8.5. And then solve for the 5. In, this, in essence, I divided both sides by 5, and I got 8.5 <clears throat> divided by 5, which is the 1.7. Now, arguably, I could have done the calculation for the other two. I, I don't need to. I just need to prove um, or give a possible height of Sean. Okay. Right, let's um, move on. So, 9 part B, now I've copied across the same blurb on the top. Okay, but part B asks, Sean says that his shed has capacity of over 1 million litres where one meters cubed is equal to 1,000 liters. Work out the volume of Sean's shed to show that he is correct. Now, the, um, I suppose the way to approach this is just a bit of background. The area of a rectangle is lent by uh, width. Now, the volume of a rectangle is lent by width by height. Actually, I probably should have said that differently. Uh, it's whatever way you say it, by the three dimensions. Okay, now the area of the triangular part, okay, is equal to a half times base um, times height. Okay, now the area, of the, the volume of the triangular part is a half by base by height 
by the the length of it, okay, the 18, okay, whichever way you want to call the length of it. So in a, in a sense, I can make up a formula here, like the volume of the shed, okay, is equal to the volume of the rectangular part plus the volume of the triangular part. Now, how do I say that? Okay, so I go, well, the this would be the length by width by height, okay, plus a half times the length by width by height. Now we've, in a sense, we've, we've two different heights here, okay, it's two different shapes. Now the length there would be 18 times the width would be 12. Now the height of the rectangular part is just the seven, okay. Now plus a half times the length is still 18, the width is still 12, and the height there, the height of the triangular part is the 1.5 we mentioned earlier on, okay. Now that's a calculation, I'll throw it to the calculator, but I have it done out digitally here um, to save the time. It's just a, it's a, it's a calculation. You do it separately as two different parts or do it as one big calculation. But I got 1674 meters cubed. And it is always important to note that you should show the calculation so that if you made a calculation error here, there would be a penalty applied here, but you've shown the setup. This number isn't just made up. Okay, It came from a calculation. Now, if the calculation is wrong, yeah, there's a penalty. But... Um, you, this would be accepted as correct in the rest of the question. Now, they then tell me in the question that one meter cubed is equal to a thousand liters. Now, if one meter cubed is equal to a thousand liters, well, what's 1,674 meters cubed equal to? And in a sense, I'm just multiplying both sides by the 1,674. Now, I've represented that calculation here. I'd, 1,674 by 1 is just 1,674, okay? On the far side, I can just add um, zeros here. And I just realized I had an error on the notes there. I don't know why I had an error, but I did. And it's fixed now. So um, you multiply the 1,000 by 1674. You're just really adding three zeros. Okay. So you get, what's that, 1,674,000 litres. Okay. So is, um, is it, Sean says his shed has capacity of over 1 million litres. It does. Okay. So Sean's right. Okay. It's actually got 674,000 um, litres more, but that's more, and that's all you have to say. So a lot of marks there, okay, but a challenging enough start here. But in a sense, if you know the volume of a rectangular formula, the one, the volume of a triangle, in that sense, a triangular um, prism, basically, okay, is slightly different and not one that would necessarily be given in the maths tables, I don't think. Anyway. So that's that. Now, part C, C here says, use the theorem of Pythagoras to find the length of the distance marked D in the diagram below, which is the slant length of the roof. Give your answer in meters, correct one decimal place. So the second I see Pythagoras' theorem, I'm going to write Pythagoras' theorem down. And remember, it's given in the maths tables. Okay. The square of the hypotenuse, or the longer side, is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So my triangle, okay, now you're kind of focused on a right angle triangle, because Pythagoras only works with right angle triangles. Okay, so that's my right angle triangle, and apologies, I'm a terrible drawer. I know that this is the halfway point, so that's six, and that's 1.5. So I'm looking for this length here. So if I fit in the formula, so C squared is equal to, and it doesn't matter which I call A or B, I'm going to call that A, call that B, is equal to 1.5 squared, okay, plus the other side, which is 6 squared. Now, that would be a calculation. Now, 1.5 squared, I'm just going to go to the answer here, okay. Um, 6 squared plus 1.5 squared gives me the 153 over 4. And I've used the calculator there. Now, from here, I could just skip on to it like, later on, but I'm going to actually do the work here by hand, okay? Um, and in a sense, just for the practice. Now, one way to get rid of the square here is to square root both sides. If you ever want to get rid of something, do the opposite to it. But I have to remember, if I do it to one thing, I have to do it to everything else, okay? Now, the square root and the square will cancel, so you're left with C, which is what I want, okay? 
and I have this big square root of 153 over 4, which again, if I use the calculator, it will simplify it for me. But there is a rule of powers which says that I can apply this big square root to both top and bottom. And that's what I've tried to illustrate here. Now, on the top, I'm looking there for what two numbers will multiply to give 153. And ideally, one of them should be square rootable to an integer. So if I, I have it down here, square root of 9 by 17 is the same thing as the square root of 153. I'm allowed to do that because I'm just expressing it in a different way. Now, there's a rule of powers which says, rule 7 or 6 or something, that says if I have two things multiplied under square root, I can write them as two separate square roots. And that's what I've done here and here. Now, the bottom part of this, the square root of 4 is just 2, so I've, just, I've already simplified that. Now, the square root of 9 is just 3, times square root of 17 is an irrational number, so it goes on forever. So I'm better off not changing that at the moment, okay? And I ended up with 3 times square root of 17, to all divided by 2, is the same thing as this number we originally got. Now, the calculator, if you put that in the calculator, it would have brought you directly to this answer. And then you could press the SD button to turn that into a decimal. So to finish off then, once I've changed that to a decimal, because they do say they want the answer in decimal form, okay, not fraction form. So there's a, it's longer in the calculator, but I only need to one decimal place. So the second decimal place is what matters. That number is bigger than five, so the digit prior to it rounds up by one, and I get 6.2 meters. Now, like all things, I should try to put this through like common sense, okay? Like, if I got one meter there, or a very small number, like, this is six meters. So how could that be one? Like, it must be, it's going to be slightly longer than this, okay? So it wouldn't make sense. Now, if I got a huge number, um, then that wouldn't make sense either. So this should make sense. 6.2 doesn't seem outrageous. I'm going to write the 6.2 on top, okay? We have the 1.5 and that was the uh, the six meters down here. And that was probably the hardest thing to realize. This is half the halfway point, okay? Now, if we move on then to part C, or the D, rather. This is saying a scale diagram of the foot of the shed is shown below. One point on the diagram is marked A. Construct an enlargement of the diagram below with center A and a scale factor of three. Show all your construction lines clearly. So in a sense, we're going to pick a point, or, or basically our points, okay? So if I'm moving along on this part here, okay? Now, if this is my point that I'm worried about, okay? Let's say that was two centimeters. Well, then my scale is going to be two times three, which is going to be six, okay? And I can measure it, or you could just use a compass and measure that distance to go two more times on, okay? Draw a straight line, and that's my... Uh, by enlargement for that point there. I'm going to do the same thing here, okay, and I want to go twice that distance, okay, now I'm guesstimating here, just so be somewhere maybe there. Do the same thing here, okay, so you're going to go twice that distance on, so maybe that, and maybe that, and I'm ballparking here. And then finally, this last one here, so go one going twice that distance there, so maybe that, and then maybe that. And that's my new shape, okay? I'm going to show the diagram just because you just, I don't have a ruler on this um, rating pad. Um, that would be it taken from the marking scheme. So different ways of doing it, just as long as you're applying the scale factor correctly, okay? So whatever these distances here are, you're going to go from, it's going to be three times bigger. So one, so two, and then three. And you're doing the same thing all the way around and making up with the new shape, okay? That's a fairly handy one in the scheme of things. No tricks that I can see. It. I can see. So that's part D. Now part E uh, has two parts. Um, the diagram below shows part of the roof of a smaller shed. So it's not the same shed as in the previous parts. Um, some measurements are marked on the diagram. So you have this. Now I think I have this stretched. Okay. So if I'm not mistaken, this should be 30 as well. Okay should be a shed with the same roof, okay, um, you decide. So 30, 30, 60 from 180 means that would be 120. Okay, so if those, 
numbers are useful in the calculation, that should get me maybe the attempt okay, in, in the parts. But what do you see? Part one here says show that BC, so this is the length of BC, is equal to 4.65. Now, if that's 4.65, this can't be 30. If that was 30 as well, then this should be 3. Okay, so my calculations there are wrong. Okay, now I'm not going to scribble them out too much, I'm going to put a cross through them. It was wrong thinking on my part. So this is some sort of weird shed that the, the, the two eaves of it aren't the same. So maybe it's not stretched, the diagram. It's, it's whatever. This is my bad thinking. So maybe BC isn't 4.65. So let's see if it is. Okay. Now, um, if I go to the information they have, so I'm going to redraw it. Okay. Again, this doesn't have to be very nice. That's 30 and 3 and 7. Okay. So I'm trying to use the information I have now, if this is a right angle triangle, I might be looking at the trigonometric ratio sine cos tan, or maybe Pythagoras or something along those lines, but it's not right angled. So it's either the sine rule, okay, so A over sine A is equal to B over sine B, or it could be the cosine rule. But I always try the sine rule first. Now, I'm looking for a side, okay, so I need, so I need this angle and the side here, okay, and I need another angle and its corresponding side. So I don't know this angle, and I don't know this angle. So actually, sine rule won't work. So it's going to be cosine rule. So a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2 times b times c times cos of the angle. Now, the cosine rule works. If you have an angle and the two sides either side of it, you can find the angle opposite the, the side opposite the angle. Okay. Or if you have all three sides, you can use it to find the angle. Okay. You should be careful which side you choose. So if this is the angle I have, I'm going to call that angle A, and this is side A. It doesn't matter if I call this B and little b, um, big C and little c. I, I can label them whatever way I want. Once I have this, I'm going to fill in the, the information. So A squared is equal to, now the B value I said was 3, plus the C was 7, minus 2 times 3 times 7, times cos of 30. Now, that's a calculator job, okay? So I'm going to check the answer instead of having to program it. Um, it's 21.6269. Now, that's a rounded figure, likely. 21.2, I've forgotten already. 6269. 6269. Again, you, if you had this on the calculator, you'd have the answer saved. The one mistake, or very common mistake with this is people forget that there's a square there. So to get rid of the square, I'm going to square root both sides, okay? And again, if I use a rounded answer there and I square root a rounded answer, it's likely to affect the answer, potentially. And if it does, it's going to be a penalty applied. But the square root will, will, will cancel the square, so I'm left with A is equal to whatever this number is. Now in the notes, just to save myself, I got 4.650. They asked for the answer, answer correct at two decimal places. So the zero doesn't affect the number prior to it. So it's 4.65 meters, okay, is the unit. Now, that's that, okay. So again, with the non triangle triangles, it's either going to be the sine rule or the cosine rule. And I always personally try the sine rule first. I, for some reason, I prefer it. And then if that doesn't work, because um, I don't have enough information, and as always, you have to have three of the four variables in the sine rule for it to work. I didn't have them. I only had, um, um, I suppose I probably could have used it. I, I probably could have used the sine rule to find one of these angles. And then used, actually, could I? I didn't have this. No, I couldn't have. I, I only had two of the four things. So it wouldn't work Okay, in any way. Now, part two says, find the angle ACB. So find this angle here. Now, I made a wrong choice earlier on, uh, thinking it was 30, but that's it, we don't know that angle. Um, find the angle ACB. That's the middle letter that matters. Okay, So it's this angle, as we said, this one here, Okay, um, that the roof makes at the point C. Okay, Give your answer correct to the nearest degree, so it's rounded to the nearest degree. And remember that BC is equal to 4.65 uh, corrected to two decimal places. So I know that this is 4.65. I'm going to redraw the diagram. It, I find that it helps me to figure out what's going on. 
even if I am terrible at drawing. Okay, 30, uh, 3, and 7. Now, now that I have more information, okay, I'm going to try the sine rule again, because it's still a right angle triangle. Okay, but the question is, I'm trying to find this angle here. So if this is an angle I have, I'm going to call that angle A, okay? So in a sense, that's going to be the 30, so sine of 30. The side across from it is little a, okay? That's 4.65, and that equates to, now the, it doesn't matter, I suppose I want to use the side that's useful to me. So the side across from the angle I'm looking for is the one I should use. So that's the B value over sine of whatever angle it is. Now I've run out of space here, so I'm going to use the answer in the notes. And something I, when I was looking back over these when I made them a while ago, the labeling here could be confusing, considering that it's already pre-labeled for you. And in essence, there, there is a version of the sign rule, okay, where you can pick the two ones. This, this is all equal to each other. So I could pick A sine A and equate that to C sine C. And then I wouldn't need to worry about labeling, okay, as much. I don't do it that way personally. I just remember this formula here, okay, and then adapt the labeling to my needs. But this is where we left off, okay? Now, what I've done here is, and I suppose in maths, it's a weird thing. You're allowed to do whatever you want as long as you do the same thing to everything. And I'm sure there are exceptions to that rule. I can't think of any right now. But if I flip this side, okay, I can do that as long as I flip this side. Now, we only want to do things that are useful. And I don't particularly want the sign B on the bottom. So by doing that, I've achieved the sine B not being on the bottom. Now, there, algebra is one of these things that there's many, many ways to get to the end of an equa equation. It's just which one do you think of at the time you're doing it? And it's perfectly allowed to do that, and that's what I've done here. Now, I want B on its own, so this 3 needs to go. So I'm going to multiply this by 3 to create the situation. 3 divided by 3, and they'll cancel. I'm allowed to do that as long as I do it to both sides. Okay. Now I've represented that here, sine 30 over 4.65 times three is the same thing as three times sine 30 over 4.65. And all I've done in this last step here is I've brought the sine across the equal and it turns into inverse sine. So I'm finding inverse sine of everything on the far side, which is calculator work. Program that into the calculator. I got 18.82. Um, degrees. I'm not sure if I had to round that. Actually, it does say, I haven't actually, I should write this. Um, in, in essence, I've lost a mark here by not rounding it. 18.82 uh, would round up to 19 degrees is equal to B. Okay, so I think I've not missed anything. I have a terribly bad habit of reading a question and then forgetting these little things at the end. It is important to read the question more than once. Um, and sometimes I might have to read it three or four times, and if I don't, I make a mistake, and I only find out afterwards when I look at the answer that I just didn't achieve the full marks because of my own lack of of of, of reading the the information. Right. So that's question nine. Um, as always, if you want a copy of the notes I'm working off, send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com, and please like and subscribe to get access to more playlists. Thanks.